I, I understand that um, your family has had a very long-standing connection or, um, to Karmapa, and I was wondering if you might be able to tell me a little bit about um, your father's relationship to him and, and the role that he served Karmapa. Yes, uh, my father was, uh, yes, he was a uh, monk at Tupu, <clears throat> and he served his solness when he was younger as a shrine master for a couple of years or so. And then uh, after that, you know, he traveled with his holiness uh, in different sacred places in Tibet. And then later in his, I think, early 20s, you know, he became uh, Deputy General Secretary. And uh, my father told me in Tsurpu there's a really interesting Tsurpu, the seat of Kramapa, uh, there is a really interesting system that how they choose the general secretary is uh, all the key administrative officers uh, will have like some candidates that they choose. And then those candidates are brought to Kramapa and then Kramapa will have a special hmm, You know, he does a special aspiration and prayer <clears throat> and then uh, goes to a special shrine and then chooses one of the names. You know, it's like uh, picking one of the names from the box. And so that's how he was chosen as uh, one of the candidates and then his name was picked, you know, as a Deputy General Secretary. Uh, uh, yeah, and so then since then, he served as a deputy general secretary for a while, and then he became the the, uh, the actual general secretary after three or four years. <clears throat> and then, since then, he's been general secretary until he died in 1982. And so he served his holiness for a long time in Tibet. <clears throat> and in Surpu, uh, there's one part of the Tsurpa Monastery is a newly built temple, uh, which my father actually built it for his holiness uh, under his guidance. And then also he did a lot of work in Tibet for Kamapa's administration. And one of the key things he did was uh, organizing the escape in, in 1959. Uh, under his holiness's guidance, he organized the escape. And then he also was responsible for getting all the important treasures of uh, the Kamakagyu lineage that has been inherited since Marpa, Melorepa, yeah. you know, and Gampompa, and first Kamapa, Tusum Kempa. And so, you know, a good number of uh, great treasure for uh, Kamakagyu lineage uh, has been uh, able to come to India with His Holiness the 16th Kamapa. And it was, of course, 100% due to His Holiness's blessing, his vision. And But my father was the general secretary to execute that vision. And so he was pretty successful in not only bringing His Holiness to uh, India, but also <clears throat> bringing these treasures along uh, with Kamapa. I understood it was a very large traveling party too, something like 150? Yes, yes, and a so large that's, number. It's quite a bit to <clears throat> organize. Yes, and then, you know, once they got to India, you know, then His, uh, His Holiness uh, had this vision to build a monastery in India in exile to preserve the lineage and the teachings, you know, build a good container. <clears throat> and so he gave the, the order to my father to build a Rumtek monastery. So my father was the key architect and uh, construction manager and also construction worker, you know, along with many, many uh, Tibetan people who escaped with the Solness. They all worked together like a family, you know, no, not like in a hierarchy, you know. I understood Karmapa himself actually contributed, you know, physical labor. Uh, his sons may have done some at the beginning to initiate and give blessings, but mainly it, uh, it was a lay people and the monastic sangha, you know, who worked hard together.